Hi there, it's Common Magician, and I've got something interesting to show you as usual. So uh, we'll need a deck of cards here, and um, we'll just give them a quick, quick shuffle. Very simple kind of uh, presentation we're going to look at here. And uh, what I need you to do is, uh, would you mind just giving a cut, about half, cut it off, cut the top right there. All right, very good. So um, what we're going to need is we're going to need just a few cards to work with, just some random numbers. So if we see any picture cards, we won't use those, but we'll use uh, any number cards. So right here where you cut, we'll just take uh, the first few. Uh, let's see here. We've got seven, seven, three, four, and... Five. Yeah, we'll take those. So seven, seven, three, four, and five. Seven, seven, three, four, five. So we don't forget this. We'll just write it down here real quick. Seven, seven, three, four, five. And I don't know. Uh, uh, does that does that mean anything to you? You know, it actually it actually looks kind of weird from my perspective. If I do it this way, maybe you can see a little better what I'm seeing. How about that, does that mean anything to you? Take a look in the box. Shell. Okay, so um, we're going to do a, a few videos here trying... I'm going to make an attempt to return a little bit back to the roots of this channel. Uh, the name of the channel is The Common Magician, and... Uh, there, there have been some videos that I've done on the channel over the few years I've had this running uh, where people wonder, not just things that we talk about, but sometimes things I present where people say, eh, it's not so common, you know, nothing, nothing I do is very terribly hard, uh, but some of the things I do may not be right in, you know, in the wheelhouse of the common amateur out there that's looking for strong material to do for family and friends. So, um, this actually a trick I hobbled together this week. I was on vacation. You saw from the last video that I posted just a little commentary about uh, the state of magic, uh, and my very non-emotional response to that, um, it's who I am. But anyway, uh, I was on vacation down at the beach and obviously these things are everywhere, right? So I was out on the beach and I picked one of these up and I, and I remembered uh, this sequence of numbers uh, from Dan Harlan tipped this off in a lecture. I don't think it was even his lecture. I can't remember which one it was in, but he talked about the sequence of numbers. 77345 is one of those uh, number sequences where when written properly um, uh, in the proper form uh, can be flipped and will spell a word, shell. There's quite a few of those kinds of number reveals that are used in mentalism. Uh, and this is just one that's always kind of stuck in my head. Uh, so I, I thought of it as I was at the beach and I thought, hey, you know, that'd be a nice little, little gag to pull, you know, this evening when we have the cards out. So what I did is I had a shell, had it in my pocket. I uh, took the cards out. I slipped the shell into the box uh, like this. So it's kind of beveled out. And then I quickly just called to the top on offbeat, no one's paying attention, uh, 77345. Okay, so if you call it in the order that it would spell, 54377, spelling shell, that it'll come out right. And then what I did is I took this and I set it in the box. Obviously, it can't fit in there with the shell, but what I did is I put it in there so it's kind of beveled, and then I put the tab on it like that, and then I set this down on the table facing me. And I put my arms out like this, and there were some other things, you know, a cup of coffee and some checks mix and 
potato chips and stuff. There's other things on the table. And there's also a pad and a pen for scorekeeping for various games that we had, uh, that we were playing there through the week. And uh, what I did was I waited for an opportune moment. I had this all set ready to go. And then I said, hey, you want to see something? I got an idea here. And then I took the cards out. And the the impression here is that you're taking the deck out of a box fairly, right? Square straight away. And then I was able to set the box over there. And this is loaded now. Um, there's a number of different um, card box effects that use that premise where the cards aren't actually all the way in, uh, but because of the way things are sitting and the way that you address your spectators in the moment when you take the cards out, it looks like the box is empty, right? So that's that's a gag. It's a detail. We'll talk about this more at the end of our little series here. We'll come back and circle back to those things, but this is the trick. Um, I already have my cards set on the top. And then you can tell from the video just how this went. I did a very simple, very direct, false, uh, or at least retained shuffle sequence and cuts. And then I forced my cards out using my trusty, handy-dandy cross-cut force. Um, never leave home without it. And then the rest is history, as they say. So um, what we're going to talk about here is on each video, I'm going to talk about extremely simple controls that can be done at a table uh, and be used to create very powerful outcomes. This is extremely common magician centric, right? This is, this is after those of you out there that are true amateurs, that are looking to do very powerful magic, um, very classical kind of table card magic, uh, using very accessible means. Okay, so we're going to go back kind of the beginning, back to the roots here of the channel, and we're going to focus on that. So if this is uh, well below your capability, just turn this off and watch some of the older videos or wait for the next thing to happen. Uh, or hang in there and uh, add to the discussion below, because I'm sure many of you out there do these kinds of things, and you have plenty that you could say about it and share with uh, the rest of us and uh, add to the conversation. So pointers and tips are always welcome from people with experience um, or questions if you have them. So first we're going to look at just the top stock retention. Retaining a top stock, very, very beginner control, uh, but with a good designed effect, a good well-designed outcome, you only ever need simple controls. The control is not the trick. The control is not the trick. The effect is the trick. The control is merely uh, uh, part of the method under the hood, kind of out of sight, out of mind. And we're going to spend a little bit of time on very basic handlings that you can use over and over and over and over and over again to create very powerful outcomes. And uh, I do it all the time. Some of you do it all the time. It's a, a worthy endeavor. Um, now let's look at this, this very quickly. The first control we're going to examine just on this video is going to be a top stock riffle, top stock retention riffle. The way this is going to work is I have my five cards on the top. They're already set up here in uh, the order that I need them and I'm gonna keep them there. Uh, very similar procedure when trying to keep cards in the bottom, but we'll look at that at another time. You're going to take half of the deck off the top, cut it to the right as if doing a real shuffle. Now, doing a genuine shuffle, you would bury the top card and you would bury the bottom card. So what I would do is I would drop first on the right, drop second on the left, then I would drop uh, a last on the left, burying the top card. So the bottom card from the deck would get pushed up into the deck, the top card from the deck would get pushed down. We are going to do exactly the opposite. Okay, now you're you're thinking, well, this looks quite obvious, but there's a there's a an added uh, there's an added tactic we're going to use that makes this pretty covert. Okay, first thing you're going to do is you're going to drop about half. Be very conservative with this. Drop about half of the cards on the bottom section, the left hand side. Then start riffling fairly and drop 
a good margin of cards uh, last on the right. Okay, so I've got my five cards plus a couple cards under that. And then immediately you're going to push together and square. Now what I do is I tend to get my fingers kind of open and out front, give a little bit of cover, and then push them together. So what I've done is I've just retained my top few cards on the top. Again, that looks like this. Top goes to the right, drop, riffle, push together. The, before we get to the second half of this, which is going to make this look a lot better, um, I can't impress upon you enough. What you need to work on is not riffling. What you need to work on is riffling and then immediately squaring. Riffling and then squaring. You don't want to have pauses in there. You don't want to go over here and line up. Hmm, okay, so now I drop half, then I riffle, and then I leave space, and then I push it together, right? You need to have fluidity. So you're going to lift the top, go over, and then immediately go into it. And then as soon as you do that, you, you push them together. Okay, so fluidity. Don't pause. Don't stop in the middle. That's what you're working on. It is very simple. This is very easy. It's a very logical thing. It's so simple, so easy, so logical, you're going to be afraid that people will see through it. But they don't. Okay, and... We know they won't because we're going to do this part next. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to do the same riffle again, but this time I'm going to break uh, the top half off, and I'm going to take the top half to the left. I'm going to bring the bottom half out to the right. Now notice how my fingers are really over the cards. When I go to break, see how much cover I've got? It's hard to tell which side came from where. I like to riffle open so you can see that if I take the top off, it gets hard to see which one, which side went where. But when I get here and I riffle, you can see that this one ended on top and then I push it together. Okay, but whenever I go back and I take them apart, it's hard to tell which side went where. The assumption is, is that you're going to do the exact same thing on the second riffle that you did on the first. But that's not what we're doing. We're reversing it. Instead, we're going to take the bottom to the right and the top to the left. Now, what that allows us to do is to do the same retention in the opposite hands. So I'm going to lay half of the right down first. Then I'm going to riffle fairly. And then I'm going to retain a stock on the top. Pretty big stock, right? Five cards plus several more. You know, maybe, maybe as many as eight, ten cards over there. Then I'm going to push this together. So what I've done is I've made a sequence, and I've, I've kept these cards on the top. My sequence looks like this. Top to the right, riffle, push together. Bottom to the right, riffle, push together. This, this change in the top card in the sequence really muddles up the picture. People who are casually, people who are directly looking at it. First of all, nobody's directly looking at a shuffle. They're going to be pretty casually looking at it. Nobody's analyzing what's going on. But as they look at that, they will see a change in the order between the two riffles and, and squaring motions. And that is where the deception is at. It looks as if the top card is getting buried in there. It looks as if it's very fair. Okay. Now this plus a few more things that we're going to do with respect with uh, to a false cutting, which we'll look at on the next video. Um, uh, will really make this look fair. But again, this is not the focus. This is not the focus of the trick. This is the setup. This is, this is the before we begin stuff, right? The trick really begins at, go ahead and cut the deck. So we can get away with very, very simple controls and really do a hands-off routine. I mean, I'm not doing anything. I, I, I'm really doing nothing to make this trick work. There's really no intervention. I'm just I'm just cheating on the shuffle, and I'm keeping the cards where I need them to be. Our focus is going to be on the revelation. Our focus is going to be on the cuteness of the reveal and the cleverness of the design and the presentation. That's where the magic's at. We'll devote uh, a video just to that uh, when we get towards the ends of the towards the end of this uh, sequence here. So anyway. Top stock retention shuffle. Use it all the time. Use it all the time. You don't have to be you don't have to be very clever. You can be very simple.
uh, when you're just maintaining a few cards. And more often than not, you only ever need to maintain a few cards. You don't have to maintain a full deck. So there's no sense in doing a push through shuffle or a you know pull through or a zero or any other kind of you know full deck control or other kind of extremely I wouldn't say extremely convincing but uh, a valiant effort at at being convincing there's no need for that when you can do a very simple uh top stock retention changing the uh sides of the packets on the second riffle one simple thing makes it makes it very very deceptive so uh that's that uh top stock retention that's where we're going to start with that we'll look Next, at the next video, we will examine some false cuts. Simple, simple, accessible false cut sequences uh, and the way that we can handle that uh, quite simply, minimal practice and preparation, uh, but highly effective strategies that you will use over and over and over and over again uh, in your table card magic. So with that, good luck with that and happy magicking.